Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part one of a little series I'm going to do called follow-ups. Lots and lots of people say, hey, you've got a follow-up checkbox in your database, in the Tech Help Free Tem Template database, but you don't really do anything with it. So I got a laundry list of items that people want to see me add this stuff to the database. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next couple of videos. This is part one. We're going to make a query and a separate form so we can see only the contacts that are marked for follow-up. We'll make a button from the main menu to get to that form. We'll make the customer combo box and add a double-click event so we can double-click on the customer to open up their customer record. Now, before we get started, go watch my customer contacts video. It's a free video. It's on my website. This is the prerequisite. The stuff we're doing in this follow-up series is based on the contact portion of my other database. So go watch the blank template video. If you haven't watched that yet, watch the customer contacts video. You're going to also need to know how to use query criteria. So there's another video for you. And I am going to be sprinkling in little bits and pieces of VBA. No serious coding in this series. Just a couple of lines here and there. But if you know a little tiny bit of VBA, like I'm going to show you, you can make your databases a whole lot more powerful. So if you've never done any VBA before, don't be scared. Go watch this. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know. I'm going to do little things like we're going to open a form with one command, right? Just you know, a double-click event to open up the customers from the follow-up form. Things like that that are very hard to do without VBA, or at least they're a lot more cumbersome. So go watch this, get a little background on VBA, and then come on back. And then, yeah, go watch my on-double-click video, too, where I show you how to do the double-click event. Okay, I'm going to show you again in this video, but... If you want to watch it, go watch that. <laughs> okay, so in the Tech Help Free template, way back when we built this, we added in the contacts system a little checkbox here for follow-up. And the meaning of that is when you talk to a client or they visit or whatever, you put in some notes, you know, stopped by, blah, 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 whatever. And then down here, you can mark that as a follow-up. But we really haven't done anything with this follow-up, and I've gotten dozens of emails from people asking me to do some stuff with this and make it useful. Because right now, it's that, that's just a checkbox. Okay, so in the next couple of classes, we're going to do a little series on this. Part one, part two, part three, whatever. I don't know how many we're going to do. i got a whole list of questions here. I'm going to try and get you know, through as many of them as I can. We'll do a little bit every day. If there's stuff you want to see, post it in the comments down below, and I'll add it if I can. So the first thing we're going to want, and this is the number one request, is to make a list of all of the follow-ups that we have to make. Because not every contact is a follow-up. Sometimes you just put it in here because, you know, you want to track what was talked about, but you don't necessarily need to call them back or do any other kind of follow-up. So let's make a continuous form that is similar to the contact form, okay? But it just shows the follow-ups. All right, so I'm going to close this. Now, before we build a form, I'm going to build a query, and the query is going to put some criteria on here so I don't see contacts that aren't marked as a follow-up. So let's go to Create, Query Design, bring in that contact table. We can close that now. And bring in the fields that you want to see. I'm just going to bring them all in. And I'm going to set follow-up equal to true down here. So I'll only see records that are marked follow-up. And now if I run this just to see what I got, okay, there's four of the contacts that are marked follow-up. Now, I got this thing over here called field zero, and this guy is contact T dot follow-up. Why is that? Well, that's because I got the same field in here twice. So to prevent that, we just hide that guy. That way you can bring in the star, you can bring in fields a second time, put criteria on them or sorts or whatever, and then it doesn't change the name of your field up top. That's a little trick. Okay, now let's save this as my follow-up queue. Close that. And now we're going to make a form for our follow-ups. Now, I've already got a form that's very similar to it. It's the contact form. So let's just repurpose this guy. Okay, I'm going to click on this guy, Control-C, Control-V, copy, paste. We're going to call this follow-up F, follow-up form. And then we'll design it. And just so we can keep things separate, I'm going to change the colors just a little bit. So I don't get confused as to which form I'm working on. Let's make this one purple. There we go. And we'll change that background color in there to a lighter purple. 
So I'll pick maybe that one. Okay. Now for this one, since it's based on follow-ups, I'm going to move this up here so I can more easily um, check things on and off when I'm done making a call, for example. So I'm going to cut that label off of it, click in the form header and paste it, and then get the hand and drag it this way. It used to be a hand. Now it's a four-way error. I'm still in the habit of saying the hand. That used to be when we used to do that, you used to get a little hand that goes over it. I don't know why they changed that. I like that. All right, so it's slightly different than the other form. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. We're going to add a date here, too. Okay, all right, so save that. Let's close it and open up our follow-up form. Okay, now the follow-up form is still getting its data from the contact table. So let's change that, design view, open up the form's properties right there, and change the contact T to follow up, whoop, I clicked on the wrong one, follow up queue. Okay, and you can get rid of any other things in here that like the filters in there, we don't need that. All right, save it, close it, and now let's open it back up again, and there we go. Now you can see I can more easily check these on and off for each record I can see right here. All right, let's put a button on the main menu to open this form up, and let's change that header right there. So let's go to design view properties and this is no longer contacts so we're going to call this follow-ups now and you can you can make it follow-ups like that however you prefer to have follow-ups i always make it one word now this is i made this plural because that's just a caption i try to keep all my field names and my form names and stuff singular that's just me okay let's make a button and put it on here to open up our follow-ups form now like I said at the top of the class, you can enhance your databases a ton by learning a teeny tiny bit of VBA. So, yes, you can do this with the form wizard, with the, the command button wizard, all right, to open a form. If you don't want to learn programming, that's fine. But I'm going to sprinkle a little tiny bit of VBA throughout this video and the, and the rest of the series because I want you to get in the habit of seeing just a little tiny bit of code here and there. And watch how easy this is. I'm going to copy one of these other buttons, copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll change this to follow-ups. All right, let's change the name of the button over here to follow-up BTN. Right-click on it, build event. That'll open up your code builder. And I'm right here. And it's very simply, do command dot open form, follow-up F. See, since I'm making all of my actual object names, my form names, my field names, I make those singular. I don't have to worry about it at this point. Is it follow-up or follow-ups, right? Okay, and I'm just going to open that form and show all the records. Let's close this, close that, open the main menu back up again, and there's my follow-ups. Now, it would be nice on this form to see who this customer is and maybe even be able to double-click to open up the customer record, right? That'd be pretty cool. All right, so let's go to design view. I am going to add a combo box in here that has the customer's first and last name and of course it's linked to their ID because there's the customer ID field right there that's how we know who belongs to this contact to this follow-up all right I'm just gonna make some room we're gonna put it in here but then I'm gonna slide it over to the left I like this being on the left hand side so let's make this now we have a query if you remember from the uh, the blank database template we've got the customer LF queue that's got last name first name already as a field so we use this to get that to go in our combo box. So it's going to be form design. Give me a combo box. Where are you? Right there. Drop it here. All right, now this is a good wizard. I like this wizard. All right, we're going to uh, say I want the combo box to get the values from another table of query. Yup. Queries, customer LFQ. Yup. Bring over both fields because the ID is what it's bound to, right? Next. Do you want to sort these? Sure, sort them by LF. Next, right? We got to do this now because remember, if the combo box is based off a table, then the wizard will see the primary key field and you have that little checkbox there to hide it. But if not, you got to manually resize that to zero width. Okay, just got to remember that one. Next, okay, which is the bound field? It's that customer ID has the actual value in it. All right, next, we're going to store that value in a field which is customer ID. Yeah, we already got a text box for it, but well, we combine them both. If we change the combo box, we want to have it change the customer, right? Okay. Next, what label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways. And then finish. 
Okay, so there's our customer combo box. I'm going to delete the label. Now I am going to slide all of, let's move that over here. I'm going to slide all of this stuff over to the right. Move that, and I'm going to put the customer on the left. Make it a wee bit bigger. And I'm going to borrow one of these labels, copy, paste. Slide that over here. Change that to customer. That's just a label. Slide that up. Slide that up. And, of course, don't forget your tab order. Tab order. We'll just do auto order. Okay, now, one thing I can see here, every time I do tab order, I always remember this. The combo box wizard doesn't give your combo box a good name. It's combo eight. We don't like that. So we're going to click on that guy. And we're going to change this to customer combo. And now that I've got the customer ID on this form, I really don't need this guy hanging around anymore. I had it hanging around the other form because we didn't need to see the customer because the only way to get to the contacts for that customer was through the customer form. So here, we can just delete it. And that'll give us more room here for notes. So much more room for activities. All right, let's save it. Close it. Open it back up again. Oh, wrong one. Open it back up again. <laughs> and there you go. Now I can see who each of the customers are here too. Now, it'd be nice if I had a way to jump to this customer, right? If I, like, double-click on this, it opens up their customer record. So I'm going to come into the office in the morning. I'm going to hit my follow-ups button. I'm going to see who I got a call, right? And then I want to be able to double-click on them and bring up their phone number, their information, their orders, all that stuff. We can do that with the on-double-click event, which is one of the other videos I told you to watch at the top of the class, right? Go to, click on this guy, go to events. Find the on double click event right there. Dot dot dot. And now we're going to open up the customer form for this matching customer. So it's going to be do command dot open form. Customer F. Comma comma comma. What's the where condition? Where the customer ID on that form equals customer combo. The customer combo. Customer ID should work, too, because customer ID is a field in the record set under the form. But basically, I try to match it to the field that's on there. Okay. All right. Save that. Give it a quick debug compile. Close it. Let's close this. Open it back up again. And now if I double-click on one of these guys, it should open up the customer form. There it is right there for that guy. See? Close it. Open it. Okay. And I like to make that field blue just so it looks different. So that the user can visually tell, that, hey, something's going on when I double click on that field. Let's make it that color blue. All right, that way everywhere in the database where the user sees a blue field, they know they can do something. Let's see what else do I got here. No, not in here. No, I think I know I, made, I, know I did it on the customer list form because you could double click here. Same thing. Okay, but now in the follow ups form, you know you can double click on the customer to go right to them. Okay. All right, so that's about it for today. Each one of these parts is going to be about 10 minutes, and we're in a little over 11 right now, so that's enough for today. i got a lot of stuff coming up. We're going to add a follow-up date on here. We're going to make it so that you only see follow-ups that are up to today, so you don't see the ones that are in the future. You don't got to call someone until next Thursday. Then you don't need to see them on there. Um, what else we got in here? Uh, pushing, pushing them back automatically, moving a follow-up to the next business day, all kinds of questions people wanted to see for this stuff. And if you want to see some stuff having to do with these follow-ups, post a comment down below, and if it's good, I'll add it to the list. I'm guessing probably maybe four or five parts of this. We'll see. And then I might package it all up and do a nice little template. Gold members, you'll be able to download this off the website, but you're probably going to want to build it yourself or wait until the last one if you want to get the whole thing. All right? So there's your fast tip for today, part one of the follow-ups series. More to come. Again, if you have any questions or stuff you want to see, post it down below. Hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, 
Feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.